Okay, we are recording. Um, so the thing I wanted to talk about first, though, was I had an interesting thought. Right. Just a, like, I don't know, an interesting concept that I wanted to bring up. That, like, isn't it so interesting that as humans going through life, we have to, like, interpret everything and go off of those imp interpretations in order to, like, act? Yeah. Um, that all of those interpretations are just being made up of, like... electric signals to your brains from various, like, um, complicated parts of physiology. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Go on. Oh, I'm completely tracking. It's like your eyes are just sending, like, signals of reality to your brain, but mm -hmm. it's like, Mm -hmm. It's so imperfect, is I guess what I'm getting at. It's like you're just interpreting reality, but it's like nobody can actually see. Like, there is no... There is no... Core reality. All we have is our interpretation. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy, as humans, that we don't actually have a perception of reality directly? We have to interpret it, and that's the best we can do? Mm-hmm. How does that make people not just immediately give up in science and religion and just go find a hole and die in? Well, no, that makes me want science more because I'm like, that is the closest you can get is like whatever the scientific reality is, is almost more real than what I can perceive. Right. That's how some people think. Yeah. I would say that that's how I think. Hmm. I've thought a multitude of ways. That, like, I can sit here and say, the sky is blue, and science would tell me, no, the sky is, you know, like, made up of these chemicals. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know, and we just perceive it to be blue because of reasons that are escaping me right now. Chemical properties. Yeah. Something. Like, why some chemicals are red But it's like, I want to know that, instead of just, like, the sky looks blue. Like, that's not... It's not enough for you. Yeah, it's not enough. That's not enough to go off of. Mm -hmm. It's like you're expecting more data. Yeah, I guess it's that I want the data well, on you, something. You want more data, not just, hey, it's blue, because that is data. That is data, yeah. It's that, just not a very satisfying data set. Well, it's human data is how I classify it. Because there's mm -hmm. all different kinds of data that you can get into. That's true. Yeah, and I guess I, I have a preference for scientifically found data. Yeah. And so there are ways of getting that information on the internet. But I do, like, that's the thing that's hard, though, is I ask myself, is that really true that that's what I think? Because at the same time as I'm saying that, I'm also noticing that, like... I was just applying that to the concept of like being neurodivergent, for example, and do I think that the psychiatrist is the only one that's right about the bipolar experience or is the person living the bipolar experience also right, you know? Um, because it's the psychiatrist that has like the scientifically found data, it's the bipolar person that has like the human data. And so I guess that kind of brings into question what I was even just saying. Like, do I actually think that? I'm not sure. Right, because then that's it's kind of empirical data telling you what to do. Yeah. Which, I mean, I think there's room for both is really yeah. how I would answer that. So right. I there guess that's more be... what I think is there's, there's room for both. Well, if that, um, if that exchange went both ways... If it was like, okay, you actually found us that data, thanks. Hey, culture update, let's refigure out what we want for that number. Right, like, like that kind my, of thing. my psychiatrist and I need to work together. I need to express to her what it is like in my experience, you know, every time we sit down for our three month chat, which, like, I've got to say, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but I feel like so accomplished that I get to go three months without seeing my mental health professional. Like, oh. oh. What a success story. Who is she? <laughs> All I, can I might even work my way up to like six months soon here. 
Like, I've been on a year of stable trajectory. Oh. Uh, so that's good. But um, yeah, that's when I sit down good. with my psychiatrist, it's like I need to express what's happening from like the bipolar's experience and she needs to tell me, well, here's what I know from like the empirical data. Empirical data. Um, which boy am I glad there fucking is any. Imagine living in a time where you're getting treated for some sort of mental illness and there's literally no data on what you're going through. Like, <laughs> 50 years ago? <laughs> well, we say that it's actually now more like 70 years ago. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh, we're getting further and further away from that time. I mean, I just, I want there to be more awareness than there even is today. It's like, I think it's progress, but I still don't think it's enough. It'll continue to progress. That's where you come in. That's where you, you can really be a help to this channel and to us neurodivergence. You're too much for anyone right now. Am I? Yeah. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. I can answer for everyone. If you like it, like, share, and subscribe. Oof. Oof. Um, so anyway, that was my interesting thought. I'm taking on the responsibility of advertising that because someone needs to. I just think it's healthy to remember that. Like whenever you're seeing or hearing or thinking anything, being like the data I'm getting is very much not empirical data. Right. It's very, it's imperfect data. So that's what I think I was reminded of is that like the data I get from like my eyeballs and my ear holes and like my brain signals is very much not empirical data. And it's healthy to remember that. It's it's not to say that it, because that would be all or nothing thinking is to go to the other side of that and say, well, then it doesn't matter at all or something like that. And we should only use empirical data. We don't want to go all or nothing thinking on either direction. We want to be somewhere in the middle, which is you need both. Yeah. In fact, maybe more than just two. Maybe there's other types of data to bring into the situation, like right. a, div a diversity of data. That sounds more like wise mind. Diverse data set. That's what I think... I would really want in a situation, so. And what that speaks to is having the ability to do this kind of research, having that be our society's main problem is figuring out what's going on in the well, brain. Well, having accurate information. Right, well, I'm access. saying, uh, well, I'm saying put the commitment forward and actually do the research like put the money there so that way the research actually gets done for That's, for like what this whole conversation like what's going on with like get more of those case studies going case studies for what though specifically oh anything on the spectrum so you're just talking about like people that have a disorder or something like that like yeah. more neurodivergence more study about neurodivergence yeah you know yeah. i totally agree okay <laughs> i feel like you could have said that in like four words and you said it in like 15 really vague words <laughs> or maybe my ear holes deceiveth me i don't know maybe they do who knows maybe they don't but that's the thing is we're both perceiving this reality different and there's no way of actually knowing what this reality truly is right all we can rely on is our perception and that is kind of scary <laughs> i find it kind of scary no you know what's actually because i like to be right you well, know yeah. <laughs> You know what's actually scary? We made that. Pure perception. Hmm. That's fascinating. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because whatever, I don't know what the hell. I mean, there's potential. Well, that's the thing is it depends on how many viewers you have. I don't know how many people are actually watching this. Probably my mom. Um, but there's um, conceptually infinite experiences happening on the other side of this for whoever could be watching. Mm -hmm. Like infinite different perceptions mm -hmm. of this moment, which mm -hmm. is, what have we done? <laughs> See, that's the thing. It's not just me that's gotta go fast. It's like humanity that's gotta go fast. No, I know. That's where humanity is headed. And what I'm trying to say is humanity needs to slow down. 
That's what I'm saying. I know an out of control train when I see one. <laughs> I don't know. Shifting down is never a bad idea. That's definitely your perception. It is my perception. And it is one of. And it's like, I can see your perception, millions. but that's the thing that's hard is like in this moment, I definitely don't want to agree that that's the only perception. Correct. You know, I agree. It is not the only perception. It is purely mine. And I want to like be on the same page about the fact that it is a perception, you know, and it's not like <laughs> the fact of the situation. Right. Exactly. So, as long as we're on the same page about that, I feel mm -hmm. cool about it. Yeah. So, shall we share a funny? We I picked think... a, a steamy fresh one today. A little, a little bun of comedy, just for you. Um... Is it that one? This one, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Eric, calm down. You don't need to be so dumb. <laughs> Yay, I did something dumb for you to say that about. Perfect, <laughs> I set it up. Yay, okay. <laughs> Good, yeah. Um, that, calm down. You don't so need to be so know, dumb. I don't know that there was actually like a specific situation for that one, but it just is like the kind of thing I would say. You yeah. Know? It it's is... just very uh, exemplary of the kind of shit Melissa says. Mm -hmm. I think that was because we were in public somewhere. And it was like you, me, Justin, and mom. Hmm. And you said it to mom. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> That's even better. I know. That's See, why I wrote it. And she wrote it. it on herself because I'll tell you one thing. I was raised by a heckler. My mother is a heckler. And I just like, I come by it honestly. Yeah. I basically can't help myself. Yeah. She did this to me. You, mom, you're the heckler and you have created someone in your image. How does it feel? Leave a comment below. <laughs> uh, yes, so I heckle you all the time. I heckle mm -hmm. anyone as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. It's one of your favorite things. It's my love language. Heckling is my love language. Yeah, I verify that. Getting a good heckle. I wish like I was one of those people that was like brave enough to like go to a comedy show and like heckle someone on stage, but I also just think that that's really mean, so I'd never do it. It's like you gotta heckle, but like you gotta like you gotta be a responsible heckler. You gotta be harmless. Yeah. You really gotta be harmless in order to be yeah. a heckler. I'm a soft, cute heckler. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're the hamster from uh, Housebroken. <laughs> Maybe you I guess. Mm -hmm. If you must compare. I must. I'm autistic. I map everything. <laughs> I'm the map. I'm, I'm the, the map. map. I'm, I'm the map. map. I'm, I'm the map. map. I'm the map. <laughs> Would that get copyright? No, because we're just being dumb. Which, by the way, calm down. We don't need to be so dumb. That's what I would say to um, the community, no, not the community guidelines, the um, copyright check, if they copyrighted us for that. That's what I would say. Calm down, you don't need to be so dumb. Yeah. Literally the title of the video, perfect. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it is a good phrase. It speaks such a hard truth kind of like getting hit by a wet noodle. <laughs> That's how it does it. Like, yes, it is the verbal experience of slapping somebody with a wet noodle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Calm down, you don't need to be so dumb. It's like, did I just get super soaked? <laughs> like. Um, um. Yeah. Um. It's just too unique of an experience. It's Friday, the sun is shining. Our tank is clean. Is our tank clean? Our tank is clean, actually. Because you did most of the cleaning. Oh my god. 
<laughs> we had a fight this morning, ladies and gentlemen. We did. Because I was heckling Eric. I mean, this is where the heckling, I can get myself into some boiling water. Mm -hmm. um, I was she boiled Eric, my water. And, and Eric got emotionally dysregulated. And then it was a whole thing. And we had to like cry and hug and like <sighs> do all the steps. Yep. But all we got steps. through it. <laughs> but we got through it. And it was just a hackle. Oh, my sweet little anemone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always say anemone and then I'm like, wait, is it an anemone? <laughs> Finding Nemo, how dare you? How dare you ruin it for people? And then you just need to say the title of the video at me. Calm because... down. <laughs> do not need to be so dumb. So I'll fully admit that it's very dumb. <sighs> it's wonderful. Anemone. 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 An enemy. An enemy. Yeah, exactly. An enemy. An enemy. Anemone. No. No. <laughs> An enemy. That's, that's the hint. An enemy. An enemy. An enemy. An enemy. I love when I pat your head, it squishes the hair. <laughs> it's quite the floof. It is. No, oh my goodness, we were looking through uh, some photos. Basically, um, we went through Eric's old phone's feed that he like saved to his computer. And that is a fun time. We basically looked at photos throughout the trajectory of like our entire relationship. Mm-hmm. And There's I still more. some looks. Um, I've been very different people in my life. Like, if you saw a picture of me from, like, I don't know, five years ago, you would be like, what? That's the same person? <laughs> yeah. Although I still see it. <laughs> like, I'm looking at those photos of me that we were looking at yesterday, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Eric, who were you with? Where I mean, was I? Really, I did not yet feel empowered to be like my true androgynous self. And that's where I needed to reach to be like comfortable in my own skin. And I was very much like, I felt um, quite forced into being this like femme version of myself, which was just uncomfortable. Uh, I mean, every time I see a photo of it, I'm like, oh, it's so cringy. <laughs> It is so cringy. Um, and it was just as cringy, like, having to wear all of those skirts and dresses. Oh, just, mm, mm Absolutely not. And I don't know what it is, but I, it, there's just, it makes me feel... Not you. ...embarrassed and, like, kind of ashamed, and I don't Maybe know exactly kind of what that is. Maybe kind of humiliated. Yeah, a little, and it's yeah. just like... Well, you don't identify with the way that feels. No, Exactly. Not at all. So that's not what you should wear. Right. Like, um, there are people that identify with that. Yeah. And that's great. Like my mom, like she's a true femme, like she loves all the femme stuff. And that's like, unfortunately who I was getting most of the pressure from, but it's just like, that thing's hard because it's like, she didn't mean anything like bad by it. She just wanted to align with her daughter. Like I can understand that. Uh, but there was a lot of pressure to be femme. Like she wanted me to have fake nails and extensions and fake eyelashes. And oh my goodness. Like. Just have it, just yeah, did not align with who I am at yeah. all, and so it just felt so uncomfortable to do all of that stuff because I just am much more androgynous than that. Like, I still very much align with femininity in certain ways, but um, I also align quite a bit with masculinity mm -hmm. or what we perceive to be masculinity. Like, I don't know, I prefer boxers, just. What does that make me? <laughs> Whatever that is, that's what I am. You're a boxer. I'm just... <sighs> Do you need to challenge anyone on camera right now? Since you're a boxer. Calm down, you don't need to be so bad. <laughs> Aren't I physically <laughs> threatening? Come at me, bro. <laughs> anyway. Once again, the hamster. There's my rant on androgyny, and boy, am I glad that I've arrived where I am today. Good job. I'm proud of you. An androgynous hamster. 
proud of it. Proud of it. So what else? What else on this sunny Friday morning in Seattle, which is a rare, beautiful thing? So let's talk about. I mean, a I'm first getting this like us. bright glint right off this car, and it's basically as good as a happy light. It's just like the city biome happy light. I mean, you, just you are you to. are well lit right now. Well lit. Ooh, are we casting some like moody shadows? Mm. Is it like a whole thing? The mood thickens. Oh. I love it when the mood thickens. Thickens like green cheese. Nope. Absolutely not. And Parmesan. And Parmesan? Why Parmesan? Big lattice of lasagna plates. Jean Parmesan! <laughs> Salad lettuce plates? What did you say? Lasagna. Oh. What the fuck did I hear? <laughs> I heard salad lettuce plates. <laughs> I said lasagna lattice plates. Okay. Those well. <laughs> wavy things. See what we're talking about perception here, folks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We caught it on camera. But what I wanted to talk about actually was this, because this is a first. Right. Guys. I have never before today had a cup of Folgers coffee, knowingly. That may have happened in right. like... Yeah, knowingly. And I would say the same. And in, I mean, this is my thing. It's a theory I have that like we're sleeping on cheap food. Because if you think about it, some of like the cheapest food has had the most like scientific research done into it to make it cheap and good. And so it's almost in some ways the most researched food. Yeah. And... I love well-researched food. Mm -hmm. And this coffee feels well-researched. Yeah, and wow. And it's cheap. Wow. Like, yeah, holy shit. Like, for example, I'm so expecting a bitter aftertaste right now because that normally is what would come from the beans we've been using. Mm -hmm. That's not coming. Yeah. It's just, like... It almost like they carved the bitterness out of that tongue equation of like right. how you experience and you it. Like Folgers yeah. probably has a lab somewhere and they're like testing their coffee for perfection, you know? And so it's like, why wouldn't you buy that, especially when it's cheaper than everything else? <laughs> so I don't know. I'm a fan of like big bulk things that you can get at Costco for really cheap, especially when it's like stuff that probably has lab research being done about it. Like that's the kind of food I'm after. I just want like so space rations. <laughs> the future, people. The future is now. I basically just want food I don't have to fucking think about. Yeah. Because I just want it to be easy. And yeah. I want it to be easy and cheap. That's a big ask. Just the way I like it. That is a big ask. Capitalism has a lot of things to say about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of one of the like things capitalism is supposedly supposed to offer is things that are easy and cheap, right? Like that's one of its like points as it presents itself. It normally does. Hmm. There are obvious exceptions. Am to I that. a capitalist? Quite frankly, yes. I mean, yeah. You, who could, who basically that is raised, I mean, you have to like be purposefully avoiding it in order to be raised in America and not be a capitalist. Mm -hmm. Or just be like one of those people that's just naturally. Our food addiction? No, no. Capitalist. Yeah? Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. It's marketing. It's advertising. Which, something I will bring up, I don't know if there's any interest. I don't even, how like, many times do I have to say no one's watching this? You get it. Um, but... <laughs> I have this thing I did that I'm quite proud of and I basically like solved my own eating disorder which I'm like See, accomplishments that's what we should I should be get a degree about. for that I feel like I need some sort of degree for that I could print you one like I need a certificate I do genuinely you to, think do you want me to make you a certificate online yeah and like a ceremony okay we have a small ceremony 
Um, because I have an eating disorder. I have a binge eating disorder. Um, so we're probably going to have to put a content warning on this video. Yeah. Reminding editing Melissa. Yep. Um, Reminder, content warning. This one. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, I have a binge eating disorder. I inherited it from my mother, as one often does. Um, and then I passed it on to my husband. He was just like fertile ground, fertile ground for an eating disorder. And I passed it right along. You did. Cause that's just how it works. It's just how it works. It's contagious as fuck. Um, so something I've struggled with my whole life and it's been, uh, the source of like so much shame, so many body issues, just so much like meekness and like lack of confidence and like certainty that there's something very wrong with me and just general feelings of inferiority because of it. Um, and so my weight has always been something that has eluded me and it's been really tough. Um, but I kind of solved it and I did a lot of math and spreadsheets and that's kind of how I did it is I got very like into the numbers and so it all started with calorie counting and then I kind of just got like more data and more well you looked at what else you could count yeah I just looked at what all I could count mm -hmm and my little bank likes to came count. up with something so i don't know i could share that at some point yeah. do like a i don't know a video series on it i'm not sure yeah but it's i think it's cool it's really helped me it like i'm eating a low calorie diet and i feel happy about it and i've stuck to it for like five months like that's longer than i've stuck to any diet ever before yeah and i've lost like 30 pounds mm -hmm. something like that in like five months so yeah it's just straight up working and that's exciting i think i'm now fluctuating in between 220 and 230 yeah but that's where i think i like the eddy if you will <laughs> the momentum of losing weight and then the rebound that happens yeah, if I mean, your you body reach, like you reach a plateau <clears throat> for sure that well, happens. I have to I have to stabilize and slow down so that way I can do that again. Is your perception? Is my perception exactly? Well, right. That's all I'm ever trying to say. Yeah. Is my perception. I hear it so strongly, and maybe that's just my perception. Yeah. Which is fascinating. Yeah. I think I'm also just like. I am quite sensitive as a person to like the concept of misinformation. Misinformation terrifies me. So I'm like hypersensitive about it. And so I'm like, oh my God, are we, I mean, I, I like really want to be somebody who never spreads misinformation or like allows for misinformation to be spread. And that's hard because it's like, uh, it is a type of perfectionism. And it's like this thing I never, I like want to make sure I never do. And that's not very realistic, but I hope that's, not something I'm ever doing. It's, it's something I'm very much trying to avoid actively because I it does the concept of it does scare me. I want everyone to have access to truthful information. Like I feel like that's just the basic human right. Yeah. And so I feel very protective over that right. I guess. I wouldn't want to like be the one with egg on my face that like accidentally spread misinformation. So I'm very sensitive about it. Wank. Yeah. still processing. Okay. Done well, processing. Done processing. This is what happens, folks. When you talk that fast at an autistic person, there's visible backup of the information. Was but I like, going fast? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, it's not necessarily that big of a deal because I just let you talk and I was just handling how I was hearing the information. Well, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Of course. I love listening to you. Mm -hmm. That's very sweet. Mm. This coffee, however, is just kind of blowing my mind. Yeah, can we buy Folgers at Costco? Yeah. I'll have to look into it. 
We sure so can. I don't know. This just in Folgers, folks. I don't know. What's the dealio? It's good shit. That's the dealio. It's like, it's very rich, but not bitter. I think it needs to calm down and, and not be so dumb. Hmm. Perfect. Indeed. It's so rich. Mm. Wow. I mean, I do like the stuff we get from Costco, too. Mm -hmm. What is it, the Columbia stuff? Mm -hmm. I think it's just, I was like, what's the cheapest bag? Now, what's the cheapest bin? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, the only thing, this would be my only... Um, caveat. Yeah, possible caveat about Folgers is, like, we'll have to test it and see about that aspect of things because it is pre-ground, and ground coffee loses flavor very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, um... It could be all well and good in the like very sealed airtight container, but once you take that film off, it could start right. to lose flavor like very quickly. So I'll be interested to see how this coffee tastes in a week. Yeah. If like the pre-ground stuff. Um, it's yeah. Just... It has, well, that, um, has that kind of fatal flaw. Cause like, can't you also get Folgers beans? I don't think so. I think Folgers is exclusively ground coffee. Interesting. Yeah. I think it's exclusively pre-ground. Yeah. So that could and be one like, potential And it's like I'm downside. remembering all of this. Like Maxwell Coffee House. Well, like I'm, re I'm remembering all of these brands come up mm -hmm. from like childhood. But yeah, I mean like that would definitely be, that's something I should do a little research on because that would definitely be like a good, um criteria for like which foods I buy is which foods have been like lab researched because that's what I'm into so I wonder if there's some way for me to even do that basically research. if you can eat science you're a happy hamster yeah <laughs> if you can taste the science like then that's you're like... why cliff bars are so exciting to me is they're like a perfectly balanced food they have like just the exact right amount of all of the macronutrients nutrients fat carb protein mm -hmm. um and they're like just the right size for like a small meal mm -hmm. and it's just like filling. they're basically a very well developed designed, designed food and yeah. i'm just into that it's yeah. just so efficient mm -hmm. that i find that beautiful and satisfying yeah there is a quality to that. And I think that's specifically what you're after yeah, in your food. For sure. For sure. That speaks much less to like growing vegetables in a garden and maybe more to like growing vegetables in one of those uh, elevator. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Like that's the thing that um, one of my friends does like aquaponics <clears throat> at home and uh, she has this whole like vertical garden. It's actually quite brilliant. It's like right above where they a have their stair. stairs and there's just all this blank space and she built a vertical garden in it and it's just like, it's quite beautiful. Yeah. But she's an engineer, so of course she did something really cool and well engineered. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Anything else to add on this, this sunny Seattle morning? This sunny Friday? <sighs> taking the taking the rays. I'm on set tomorrow. You are. You are on set tomorrow. I'm on set tomorrow. Is the film exciting? I genuinely can't remember what it's about. I need to reread the script. <laughs> yeah. You need to reread the script. <laughs> I do. I do need to reread the script. Ah. Is that a cue for you to go read the script? Is... I mean, I think it's genuinely like a three minute video, so it will not take me long. Okay. Well, that's, that's, oh, the script no. is a video. No, don't. Ah. 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 <laughs>